Republican Whip Eric Cantor won't take trash talk from the White House. Yesterday, White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs accused Congressman Cantor, the minority whip, of being a hypocrite. Now, what does Congressman Cantor say to that accusation? We spoke to him just a few hours ago. Congressman, nice to see you, sir. Glad to be good to be with you. All right, let's start with the Press Secretary Gibbs says that you are a hypocrite because you, are, you oppose the stimulus bill, yet you want a high rail train service in Virginia to create jobs in Virginia. Hypocrite? Absolutely not. I mean, listen to what they're saying here. We now know there was $860-some billion spent in the stimulus bill. Uh, and it didn't work. It was a failure. Jobs weren't created. We now know that over three million people lost their jobs since the passage of that bill. The bill has projects in it that many members have worked on over the years. Uh, there's a, an issue of transportation in the state of Virginia. I take it very seriously. Ever since I've been in Congress, we've worked on it. But it doesn't mean just because there is, uh, you know, there may be a page of related to transportation in Virginia that I should then go and support an $860 billion bill. I mean, I'm sure the president is not expecting folks to, to buy that line. Well, I guess I suppose it's a little bit awkward, too, for many members of the House and Senate who are opposed to it for fiscal reasons, then to deny their state, which I guess is almost a little bit about what Senator Ben Nelson was attempting to say about his $300 million deal. You know, well, listen, I mean, that, that, that is a different issue there. I mean, about that, you know, you know, seniors ought to be treated differently in Nebraska than they should be treated anywhere else. That's not right. I mean, that, that, the public is rightfully turned off by that. But what you've got in the stimulus bill is hundreds of billions of dollars of pork, an intention and promises to, to uh, stave off unemployment and to grow jobs, and it just hasn't materialized. You know, we've got a lot of work to do, and it probably would behoove us all to not sit around pointing fingers and attacking folks. Instead, we ought to try and get together and resolve some of the issues facing families in this country. Well, you wrote a letter, and it, um, sort of interesting, one of the, you, you outlined a number of ways the stimulus bill is being spent, and the one that caught my attention, of course, is from my home state of Wisconsin, in which which um, someone who works at a casino was sent to a two-day seminar at a local technical college to, um, so that the casino staff could handle confrontations with customers. Um, you know, is, you know, that doesn't create jobs, but that maybe holds a job or, I mean, like, what's the rationalization for that? Or should we just sort of, there are few that we're just going to have to realize are not particularly useful? <laughs> Unfortunately, this is emblematic of the type of spending in the bill. That's what Republicans said in the very beginning. We need to focus the spending, focus our attention on job growth, sustainable job growth. The way you do it is you focus on small businesses and you give them an incentive. You give them a, an opportunity to keep the lights on and to eventually grow payroll. That's what we should have done. And we find ourselves now a year later with this kind of money having been spent, the vice president announcing yesterday, uh, the vice president announcing that the, the second half is yet to come. It's, it's, we're, we're even going to get better. Well, listen, if this is the kind of thing that we're in store for, what we ought to be doing is going ahead right now and rescinding the kind of appropriations that are in this bill and putting those kind of monies back towards retiring the debt. In looking at sort of the philosophy of the Democratic Party in supporting and, and writing and, and pushing this bill to be passed, it seems that the uh, expenses to make payroll, for instance, to keep people on the job, the so-called save jobs, that was in the expectation that they would then go out and buy food and would buy clothes and consumer and sort of get the, get the economy rolling that way. Do you have any objection to that? Um, it's sort of just sort of keeping the status quo so people can buy and, and create jobs. It's sort of like their make work pay tax credit, I think they called it in the bill. And, you know, it's nice to give everybody $400, but you know what? Once the money's gone, it's spent, and that was it. What we need to be about is sustainable environment for job growth. You know, we're seeing at the state level now budgets um, having huge holes in it. I know in my state of Virginia, they're dealing with almost a $4 billion shortfall. You know what? Last year, there wasn't a shortfall because the stimulus money arrived. Well, those same jobs technically that may have been saved by the stimulus bill are now going to be cut. And what do we have to show for it? Eight hundred and some billion dollars of debt that we've now put on the backs of our kids and theirs. All right, CPAC, big meeting here in Washington of the conservative members of the Republican Party. You got, you're going to participate tomorrow? Yes. What are you going to do? Well, listen, we're going to meet with some young people who are there who are looking to sort of the hope that America has offered to the world. Uh, and I, I believe that the gathering reflects uh, people's concerns about where we're headed in this country. We have some serious decisions to make. Uh, we're at a pivotal point in our country's 
history. Are we going to be the country that we know or one that, frankly, goes more towards the style of European socialism? And we don't want that in this country. We are a country of opportunity, one without limits. Uh, and so I, I believe that we're going to have a lively discussion there. There's a lot of energy, I think, across the country for um, a shift in the debate back from the, what I believe is the extreme left towards a center because this is a center-right nation. You know, we are one uh, that believe in limited government. We are people of very special people that believe in individual responsibility, and that's the path to opportunity. 225 is the health care summit that the president has called, February 25th. Um, I realize that uh, the Democrats are the ones who get to sort of plan it because of the party in power and it's the president's invitation, but what are you actually doing? Is Are you doing anything to plan for it? Are you preparing anything? Is there anything you're doing at all behind the scenes? <laughs> The health care summit, you know, has been uh, built up now as, as a critical moment and the president is going to succeed in imposing his will uh, on the Congress and so that, that uh, perhaps Nancy Pelosi can jam through the Senate bill in the House. Uh, I believe that my mission in going to that meeting will be, number one, uh, to ask the president why it is that he supports this bill. Because it's not a bill that will lower costs for Americans. It's a bill that will cost a trillion dollars and frankly put us on a path uh, to a government replacing of our health care system. Well, he's looking for ideas. He's not, he's not going to want to hear that from you. Well, sure. And, and you know, as you know, Greta, we and the Republicans in the House, we have a plan. Uh, we put the plan out there, we had a vote on it in our House, and we're going to talk about why our plan uh, has been uh, judged by the Congressional Budget Office as lowering insurance costs. Uh, we actually do some things that promote competition, that begin the process of reform, what the American people are looking for, not the expansion of a trillion dollar expenditure that we can't afford uh, and ending up with a system that will collapse. All right, this may seem like a strange question, but what's the procedure? I mean, it makes a big difference whether you're all sitting around a table talking or whether someone's up at the podium, you get five minutes, ten minutes, or whether it's open. Do you have any idea? what the procedure is going to be on the 225. I, I don't, uh, Greta, and what I know is we're going to be at the Blair House, uh, and uh, the White House will be in charge of, um, of organizing the event. I'm just hopeful that the public uh, will be able to see and listen to the negotiations, the discussions there, and frankly, the takeaway for me is going to be if the president finally owns up to the fact that he cannot accept just as the American people cannot accept the Democrats' bill. And, and I, for the life of me, don't understand how the president can just ignore public opinion. And so I'm going to go in there and listen and to see why that is, because we have much better ideas. Those are ideas shared with the bulk and the majority of this country.